wobbler. Stewart ah, watches the, the ball. bounce. Oh, my goodness. And now we'll watch it roll inside ah. the 20-yard line and maybe even further. Can you believe that? Oh, my. Now a 12-man penalty on. It's a first down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. After a timeout. Oh, my goodness. We that it count. Oh, my goodness. There was a big lightning flash. Yeah, let's get this thing over with. There's no sense getting anybody hurt. Let's let the thing run. Don't throw the football. Run the football and get them out of here. And you can hear that. In fact, I'm okay with not playing the final 32 seconds. I don't know about you. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the third edition Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And I'm with uh, my main man here, uh, Coach uh, Cruzy. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, last week's game. Uh, I do want to mention that was the first Division II school that we have played so far this year. And, you know, all the talk in Kansas City and uh, let alone here in Liberty mm -hmm. is about you guys going to Division II. How do you think you fared? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a really good play team we played on Saturday, you know, top 20 in the country. And, and we knew going into it that they were, they were very formidable. Uh, anytime you return, uh, you know, pretty much your whole offense off right. the playoff team from last year and your quarterbacks, a preseason All-American, and, and you feel pretty good and you've had that long to prepare. They came into camp two days later than we did and uh, didn't have a, a game the week before uh, we, when we played against Sterling. And so they've had a lot of time to prepare and get a lot of things ironed out. And uh, even though they probably didn't have as many things to iron out because they had a lot of returners. But that, that was a really good football team. You know, I thought we did some good things early, uh, you know, and played with them very well. And then there were some momentum things, you know, late in the, in the, uh, in the first half and going into the second half that – you know, a young team right now that, that we didn't handle very well or recover from. Well, let's let's start off, and I think that's a great point. I thought particularly that probably uh, the first, particularly first two quarters before the rain delay came in, I thought your defense played extremely well. well how, how did you feel about their performance? Yeah, they, they played they played they played well. Uh, they didn't play good. You know, here's what I thought about our entire team throughout the game, and this is maybe stemming a little bit from the defense as well. I thought. You know, in other games, our, the way we play defensively is always proactive. You know, we're, we want to make right. people adjust off of us, defend, just the way we play sure. in our philosophy here. Uh, and I thought we played uh, more reactive than proactive uh, the other night. And, you know, I, I've talked to our players about that. And, you know, if we play reactive on defense, uh, you know, here, the way we play, we're, we're going to play good, not great. And sometimes we're going to play average and not good. And, and I thought we did that the other day. We weren't as aggressive. Here's what I think. I think they, we gave them maybe we put them up on a pedestal a little bit, and uh, you know maybe didn't feel like we belonged going into it. You know, and that's my fault as a coach for for not getting them mentally prepared to and pumping our team up to to let them know that I think they can play with anybody that uh, we step on the field with. Yeah, I think you know just observing and doing the game. I thought that the, you did all right against the run, really overall. Uh, which got hurt with the little quick routes, yep. and the, you know you were given a lot of cushion outside. Yep. You want to talk about that at all? Yeah, here's what we were doing. We actually went into the game to defend the pass, and as the game, and we, we defended the pass good early, and they started to run on us. And then, their, what their quarterback was able to do, you know, with he's as long one. as he's been there, and you know, he's a preseason All-American for for a reason. He was getting up to the line, and he had some in-play checks yeah. where where really he had two plays option, two play options. In the passing game after the snap, right. where he, if you watched it, he'd ride. Sometimes he, there'd be a, a mesh with the running back, and he'd flash the ball, and he'd just pick it up and throw it. It was a run play, and if you notice on a couple of them, there's an offensive lineman standing by the guy that that uh, caught the ball, right? A which is an illegal time. play, but but it's hard for officials sometimes with all the right. things they're trying to look at to see those things. And you know, anytime you find a quarterback that is savvy enough to be able to get you in and out of things post-snap after the ball snapped and change it from a run to a pass or a pass to a run post-snap, uh, it makes it very difficult for you to be right on defense. And, uh, you know, they caught us in some of those things. What I was more disappointed was, you know, our lack of aggressiveness and our tackling on the uh -huh. edge, you know, when those plays were made. There's several times, especially on the other boundary, where we had guys there to, to cut tackle, to make the play, and we were breaking our feet down in space. And anytime you break your feet down, our philosophy is, anytime you break your feet down in space against a good athlete on the other side, the offense has the advantage because he knows where he's going. Uh, so I didn't think we handled that very well. And like I said, we were, we were reacting instead of being proactive and, and forcing that guy back to our help from the inside. And 
in cutting his outside leg and we didn't get those things done. Well, you know, after we came back from the rain delay, I really felt like they attacked you at the B and C gap mm -hmm. on the left side, on your defensive right side, yeah. a lot. And then yeah. what they did, they attacked him with a big, what, 6'2", 235-pound kid. He was a big back, and, you know, we, mm -hmm. we had our opportunities to get him down in the gap, but we were, we were getting there with one guy, you know, and we had an extra hitter, but we weren't getting him down. And, uh, like I said, we went into the game, you know, as we broke down the two games on them last year, they were about 85-15 pass runs. We went into the game saying, okay, if they're yeah. going to beat us, they're going to beat us running the football. And, and, they, and they did at the end. Uh, they did – you know, in, in the second half, they they ran the ball fairly well at times, and but we excuse me, we were running some defenses that didn't really set up well against the run and trying to guess right, you know, against that quarterback and you know Nelson Windebank was bless his heart doing everything he could to try and change the play mid snap or mid snap to stay on course to to have the right play call against right. the quarterback, but you know the things he was doing post snap is hard defensively to do that. Well, like you said, they're number 12 in the nation. That Garcia kid was good. He's a good you football player. You know, for the player. people. You know, and, but that's who we're going to see now in yep. Division Two. No so doubt we're about it. Be ready. Yep. So I like your attitude about your defense. All right, talk about your offense. Now, I started the game, you know, uh, keys to the game. And right. me, we talked about this yep. last week, moving the change. Mm -hmm. That would help you a lot. It would help you a lot. And what I mean by moving the change is, is you're getting first down, just keeping the, the offense. Drive. And yep. keep the defense off the field. Yep. You know, you know, put the special teams at risk. Right. And, and you could do some things. There were times, and I always see the mm -hmm. the positive. Yeah. There were times where we did move the ball. We had, yep. I think, two series where we had three first downs, mm -hmm. and we were really rolling. And uh, it, a couple times we had bad snaps. We had those little things that yep. I know is driving you crazy. Yep. But overall, there was there was some growth there. There, there is. There's definitely some growth there. You know, in the first series, I think we had two first downs, and then we we had a tip ball for an interception. Right. That's two games in a row that we've had an interception, a tip ball interception on the first series. And and uh, as a quarterback, you put that on yourself. And I think you know Sean has maybe come out after in the second and third you know series and right. maybe pressed a little bit and and uh, maybe played outside of himself a little bit. But uh, no, you know, we did some good things offensively, but like, like you said, uh, I think we played a little bit the same offensively as we did defensively. We were more reactive than uh, proactive in, in our approach, at least in game from a, a playing standpoint. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't do the little things uh, to be able to sustain drives and, and keep the momentum going when we had it. And uh, against a good football team, you know, that, like we talked about last week's show, that defense is a good defense. You don't you don't become an NCAA Division II playoff right. team without good defense. A consistent division. Exactly. Team. And uh, so those guys do some really good things on that side of the ball too, uh, as far as mines defensively. But you know we felt like as we come back and watch the film, as you always do, uh, you see the the places where you should have capitalized. And you know the only you never feel good about a, a loss like that or any loss really. Right. But but uh, the thing that that I look back on is you know I look at that team and I look and I look at all the different situational things and, and know that we could compete with that team. And we did for well, a long time. Well, you, you did compete. Yeah. I and don't want to make it sound right. like you did because you did. Exactly. And, you know, if that's a top 15, 20 team in the country at the Division Two level and we can compete like that against them, you know, and, and not play well. We didn't play well in any phase. The best thing I think we did was our punt team, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But, but uh, you know, the bright spot is that, you know, if we can – play our game and execute in all phases, uh, we can compete with a lot of people right now. Well, I noticed that you uh, in the, after the rain delay and in the second half, you ran a little bit uh, more uh, midline option and uh, Sean kept the ball mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, I don't think people really realize he's a very good runner. Now, I know you don't want him to no. get beat up because it's a long way right. to temporary. But he, he can roll when he, he gets can run. He was a free safety in high school. And Sean, can, he has deceptive speed. Um, you know, we were running some counter stuff with him, some some, right. uh, some stuff where he's got a couple different options off the play, and you know, late in the game, he was pulling it and keeping it, and we were we were moving the ball. Uh, but again, that's not something we, you know, we want to make a living doing that right. with a guy like him. And uh, but we did some good things there. We played better up front uh, this this last week than we have probably since I've been here. But again, we're playing against a pretty good defensive line as we went into it, and and. Uh, 
But the, the little things at the end of the day are what are what slowed us down offensively. Yeah, you know, you, you, like you said, I think you're right on every drive you had offensively. Uh, you know, you get to roll a little bit and like a high, not necessarily a bad snap where you fumble, but a yeah. high snap. Yeah. Little things like that on the like offensive that. side, yeah. timing wise, kills you. Yeah, no doubt. And we were a little bit sloppy in the backfield, not just with our snaps, but with our footwork and you know with our quarterback in some spots and our and our running backs. Right, and I exactly. The, know what and you know the the timing back there is so important for the pace of the play and. And uh, we just weren't as sharp as we needed to be back there on Saturday. Well, of course, the third phase, of, and uh, well, one reason uh, I think we relate to each other, you know, we realize how important this is. And I'm going to start out, first of all, with uh, there was two, two plays on, on specialty teams that I mm -hmm. felt it really hurt the club. Yep. The first one uh, was a situation that was maybe just nothing more than a bad hop, and that's probably yep. the best way to put it, when we didn't field the punt, yep. and then we'll get to the 12-man. Why don't you talk about the punt? Yeah, the, the first one, we've actually got them backed up inside their own 10, and, you know, it's a, it was a huge field position game, as you're alluding to. It was 12 to nothing. Yeah, it was 12 to nothing at the time, and we're, we're playing with them, and we're doing some good things, and we're about to change the field on them, you know, from a field position standpoint, which we hadn't all game at that point. Right. And we got them backed up, and their their punter's an all-American punter, um, and he had a 44-yard average last year. So we're playing him at about 40 yards. So in case the ball gets to 45, 50, the the uh, returner can drift mm -hmm. a little bit backwards and catch it. It's always easier to come up and catch it than move back. Normal. So we were playing him about 40 Normal yards, deal. and and you know luck have it, you know that the all-American punter just mishits one completely, and it goes about 22 yards, and takes about a 15-foot hop off that turf, and I didn't know what to tell Stewie. Chris Stewart was back there as a returner, and, and it bounced 15 feet over his head, and then he's trying to chase it down, and that's always a bad situation when, you, when you're when you a punt returner and you've got your back to the coverage on a short punt. I, the thing looked almost like a, uh, the punt was almost like a bad yeah. hop, hit a rock. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, was, short, you know, you played, everybody's played the infield. Yeah, infield. Exactly. And, 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 and you're catching the ball and it goes the up. And our punt return was actually a heck of a baseball player in high school, but, you know, that one, I just kind of looked at him as he ran off, and I said, Stu, we'd like to field them all. And, you know, but I, that's a situation, it's hard I to agree with a kid you. out when, when it's, it's there, I'm not sure how to coach them any differently in that situation. You know, you tell them to move up. It was a break of the game. Yeah, it was a break of the game and it changed the field position and that was a tough, tough uh, deal for us. Yeah. All right, the next one is, I've got one of my ex-players, it's the white hat in this ball uh, game. Yeah. And I, but I, it, here's, the, let me explain this in, in, in your defense and yeah. how you feel, because I know exactly. We had the penalty for 12 men on the field. Yeah. And the key situation is still 12 goose mm -hmm. when this took place. I, of course, during the game, I didn't count, neither did Rick, so we didn't pick it up. Yeah. And, you know, as a coaching staff, those are things that really eat at your soul. You mm -hmm. talk about not sleeping, that's yeah. the key thing. But why don't you tell them about exactly what happened on this 12 men? Because a lot of people from Jewel watch the game and they'll say, well, we shouldn't have had 12 men on the field. Probably a lot of them cussing me, thinking I don't know how to Right, count. but yeah. we did, let me look in the camera. We didn't have 12 men on the field, yeah. and I'm gonna let you roll. You know, that, that's a very frustrating play, and, and, and I'm still, it's still eating at me. You know, I'll be over it by tonight, but it's still eating at me because, you know, when things happen throughout the game that you can control, you can deal with those. Right. It's the ones that are outside of your hands, like this situation right. that you can't, you know, setting up the situation, uh, you know, it's 12 to nothing. There's about a minute left to go in the minute, minute 45 left to go in the half. Right. And uh, I call timeout. We, we've got them on a fourth and seven. They're getting ready to punt. I call timeout to stop the clock. So we have some time to maybe move the ball down the field and kick a field goal, get a little bit of, uh, you know, offensive momentum going into the half. And, uh, you know, after the timeout, we've got our punt safe unit on the field, which is our defense, minus one player, which is, uh, the uh, you know, our free safety. Free safety. And we put in a returner. Uh -huh. um, you know, we, we jog them in there. They're getting right. ready to punt. And all of a sudden, the, the back judge on their boundary throws in a flag. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on here? This he is jogged. after the, what I saw. This is after everybody was on the field and already everybody, set. Everybody was already set. You know, everybody, the, the snap was getting ready to happen. He jogs on the field, gets with uh, the white hat, the head referee, and and he comes to the boundary and signals, you know, illegal substitution. Twelve men on the field, and I'm livid because I I know there's eleven because I just left the huddle, and I'm talking to guys in the press box and they've all kept because we count every time we have a special team snap, there's four guys in the in the press box counting, eleven guys, right? And they're all telling me, coach, there's eleven. 
there's 11. There's 11. And, you know, it's a five-yard penalty, so it goes from fourth and seven to fourth and two. They know. They're smart enough to know. Their coach is a very good coach. They're in our territory. It's now fourth and two. We've got momentum. Right. They're devastated right now. We've got momentum, so they go for it on fourth and two. Three plays later, they got it first and goal from the five Absolutely. in the lightning strikes. So we end up having to come out of the second half and play basically like coming out of half is you spotting somebody the ball on the five yard line and saying, here you go, defense, keep them out. And then we were kicking off to them as well. So they had two possessions in a row back, back, to, back. to back coming out of half. And, you know, that, that kind of adversity, you know, you like to think you could get through it. But, you know, our team's not there yet. And there's not many defenses in the country that if you spot the, the offensive ball first and five coming out of a halftime or a two-hour rain delay, that there's going to be a positive outcome. And uh, we, it wasn't for us either. So those, that was an extremely, extremely frustrating Huge. deal. And I knew at halftime, I, w I talked to the officials as we were walking in, and I, I told them, listen, you're wrong. There was 11, and we're all going to feel like really bad when we, find, when we see this on film. And, and our filmer, one of our filmers at halftime had looked already and uh, I knew there was 11. And, you know, after the game, obviously, you, you go in and watch the film. And, you know, I was sick watching it. Because I, I watched the wide first, counted 11, watched the tight, counted 11. And, you know, I sent the, sent the film like you do well, to that's the all conference you can do officials. In your position. And, and uh, you know, they've, they have taken full responsibility for their mistake and all of those things. And, you know, are very sorry that it happened. But, you know, our kids and our coaches and our fans, we. We all work hard, and there's there's so many things involved in this that you just hate it when one of those things happen. I'm still trying to figure out how, and and you'll never hear me very often publicly uh, say negative things about officials because we're all human beings. But when seven guys on an officiating crew can't count, then that's a big problem at the college level, at any level. Well, you you know you brought up the point that I again this is what this show is about to educate the Jewel fans and uh, and I know a lot of you are educated. I don't mean that, but uh, you know when you put your heart and soul, 18, 19 hours a day, for six, seven months a year, on the line with the kids, the coaches, the entire staff, right, the trainers, whatever yep. it may be. People don't realize how much a little thing like that hurts, and they want to know why they yeah. see on TV all these coaches. Now, I'm not saying you need to go off and get 15 right. yards because that's not the exactly. object either, but it hurts. It hurt. I mean, it, this is our livelihood as coaches, and, and I hurt more for the players than I do for the right. coaches. You know, we're going to do this for a while, you know, from a coaching standpoint. We're, we're going to coach a lot of football games, and, and uh, you know, this is our career and all of those things, but wins and losses get you fired. But, but more for the players' standpoint, you know, those guys, you know, they put in so much time and they've got four years to play. And when that's done, it's done. And uh, you put in so much work to get to those things. And, and if you screw up offensively or defensively right. or in special teams, you can handle it because it's something that you could control. It's on you too. You know, when, when something like this happens, you know, that is a pivotal play and momentum changer in the game that leads to what this did. You know, with all the different scenarios that came about with the lightning, two-hour lightning delay and all that thrown on top of it, those are, those are things outside of your control. Now, you know, we, none of us can control the weather, but you'd like to think that, you know, seven, seven guys on a college officiating crew wouldn't miss that one. Well, we'll get off that because yeah. I think we've pretty much exhausted that. Yeah. You know, and I had this question to ask. We're just going to touch upon this, and we didn't talk about it before the program, but weather delays. Yeah. You know, this weekend, uh, I don't know how much you get to see, but there were several big-time Division mm -hmm. One games, some of them even six, six and a half hours. Now, most of my career, I was an athletic director as well. Right. Your number one responsibility as an athletic director is the safety, not only of the team and the other team, but to everybody in the stands. Exactly. You got a lot of responsibility. Yeah. You err, you err on the cautiousness. Mm -hmm. But they always ask me, well, coach, what, who's at an advantage there? I'm not too sure anybody is, but this is my opinion, and I want you to yeah. pontificate yeah. on this. Uh -huh. I feel like the more experienced team that's been there and done that has a huge, huge upper hand over the team that does not I would I would echo that as well. You know, in, in those situations, you know, I said after the game in here on uh, on Saturday night, there's there's no there's no page in the head football coaching manual that talks about how to deal with your team during a two hour rain delay no. or a lightning delay or or something like that, weather related issues. And uh, you know, you do the best you can during those things. You try and keep them 
you want to get them off their feet, but you don't want to let them lay down and fall asleep either. And so there's a fine line in keeping them active, but not overly active. And, you know, we got them some nutrition. We got them some, some things to eat, some, uh, you know, granola bars and some different stuff during that time. We hydrated them well. And we talked to them a lot about adjustments for the second half right. and, and all of those things. But, you know, looming in the back of your mind there is that we're going to go back out and the ball's going to be on the five-yard five yard line first and goal. So you try and talk to them about all those things that you may see in the momentum. You try and talk them out of the things that have transpired from a momentum standpoint and get it back. And But you're exactly right. You know, a team that, that has been to the playoffs and that has older players, you know, as the core of their team, you know, fifth-year seniors as redshirt guys and fourth-year juniors that they're playing with, you know, generally, generally speaking, handle those situations better than a, than a team like ours that's, you know, still trying growing. to find its identity and still growing, and we're not there yet. We're, we're we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. You know, this is this whole building process is a process, and it takes time. And and uh, this is, you know, in a way, I'm glad this has happened to us because this is one more thing Make we can stronger. notch up that that you can go. Okay, we've been here before. How do we deal with last time? How will we deal with it better going forward? So and our players will do the same thing. It's all about the journey. Really. That's exactly right. Okay, on a positive note, before we get in talking about a little bit about the off week, let's talk about the players of the game. Yeah, yeah. No, we, you know, every week, win or lose, we're going to do players of the game because there's players that are deserving in those situations. And uh, uh, offensively, this week we went with a guy who's been very solid in the first two weeks on the offensive line, and Scott Tipton. Uh, you know, he's a junior, good player, player. good player from Lawson. Uh, he's really came into his own here over the last really six months through spring ball, and you know, we played him. As a sophomore last year, he had to start, and you know he was a little light, maybe a little bit last year, and he's put on some pounds in the in the off season, about six four two eight. Well, I, I can see a huge difference. He does some really good things, and he's a really steady player, and and you always know what you're going to get out of him. It's going to be 100. percent You know, defensively, we went with a guy who gave us a lot of production on Saturday, as we always grade production on defense, and uh, our strong safety and Kurt Webster. He played uh, from good. Shiny Mission you West. talked about him. Like, yeah, we've talked about. That him was a lead in show. for me when he made the interception. Yeah, he uh, he's just a football player. You know, he's just uh, you know, he's not flashy. He's not dynamic, but he's physical. He's tough, and Smart. he understands the the game of football. He's a player. He's just a good football player. You know, uh, special teams. Uh, we went with a freshman of ours that that kind of got thrown in in the fire a little bit the other night because or the other day, uh, we had Derek Faulkner, who was one of our wings on our punt team, huh. you know, got hurt during pregame, he messed up his back, and it is one of the, it's a crazy deal, and, and we're, we're hoping we can get him back here over the next couple of weeks. But um, Brock Sheldon out of Emporia, a freshman out of Emporia, Rick was one t- yeah, came we in and uh, was our right wing. You know, that's the, that's the toughest Played snap well. in college football to jump in on, and uh, the pressure of it, because as we all know, the, the punt is the most important snap of the game. Uh, from a, a momentum changing ability, and uh, he came in and made some really big tackles on that team. Oh, he did a great job. Well. Uh, so we went with him there. Our offense and defensive work teams, you know, offensively, Brandon Kluwer, who was uh, as a tackle, an offensive tackle at Lee Summit West from last year, has done some great things for us. You know, coming in and as a true freshman and playing really hard, and he turned his ankle pretty bad early last week. Didn't miss a snap. The kid is tough. And plays hard and a really good program. Comes from a great school. high school program. Coach and then, great. Exactly. And then defensively, a, a linebacker out of Walmigo, Kansas, named Taylor Schaefer, who's just kind of been all over for us defensively against our offense here the last couple of weeks and, and uh, wanted to make sure we honored him as well because he's doing some really good things. A couple of really, a couple of young guys are going to be really good players for us going forward. And then the play of the week and the hit of the week this week, you know, we, we sat and talked about him and, and, you know, looked at it and all that stuff. And, we didn't have a definitive one. So, you know, in those situations, I'm, we're not going to award one. If, we're, if we don't I have like any it. that are truly deserving. Like and and our, team, our team understands that, too. We didn't have a big hit. We, we had a few that you went, oh, okay, but not a big hit. Yeah. A hit of the week worthy, you know, on a big play. Where your eyes are. Yeah. It's a slobber knocker. We didn't have a – got to have a slobber knocker. Or you're exactly. At. There, there were a couple big plays that got, you know, thrown out there. And, yeah, they, they were good plays, but great plays. And we just – you know, again, we were reactive instead of proactive, and it showed, you know, in the big play potential on both sides, in all phases, really. You bet. Well, now the next thing is you, it's really good that you talked about there's no uh, no manual and no chapter in the mm-hmm. manual about weather delay. There's not a whole lot about off weeks. No. You know, and every team, we see this in the NFL as well. Yeah. 
there's because everybody has an off week yeah. in there in college not necessarily in high school you usually don't right uh, so an off week is something that is kind of testy how are you guys going to handle that you know when we put this the schedule together this year you know we looked at a lot of things and how we how we were putting it together with a, a young team and a bunch of new starters and and a bunch of new backup players on both sides of the ball and in special teams and you know the the bye weeks that we have throughout the course of the season are, are placed in strategic spots we've been as of today we've been in camp since august 9th so we've been in just over about four and a half weeks now uh four and a half five weeks that we've been here uh played two games and uh we're a little beat up and we've got some guys that have lost some weight because of that's well, going to happen heat, during the, the season heat's been tough and too. uh so this week we're using you know we're practicing tuesday wednesday thursday and depending on how we practice during those days, uh, depend we'll, we'll you know kind of we'll look at the weekend and see what we do there. But it's a time to get healthy and and refocus on the fundamentals. We had a short training camp to get prepared for our first game just because of you started a week uh, early yeah. compared to since I've been here. Yeah, was it, we started a week or we started a week early from a playing standpoint. We only started about five four days early from a practice right. standpoint. Right. So. You know, going back to some fundamentals this week and, and really touching on a lot of those things and re-emphasizing the little things, you know, the, the execution things and the little things, the footwork in the backfield, you know, tackling and how to tackle and all of those fundamentals that, that this game's built around. Right. You know, we had a great practice today and, and we spent a lot of time on just those things. You know, and as we get into the end of the week, we'll start to, to peek a little bit about next week's opponent to get a little bit of a head start there. Uh, and if we... You know, today we've got, you know, I talked to them before practice about what I'm looking for is uh, is effort and excitement. And we got that in a big way today. We had a really, really good practice today. And if we continue to get that throughout the week, you know, I'm going to get off their bodies a little bit on the weekend and, and maybe give them a day, a day and a half off there to get recovered and then come back in on Sunday and get started back into game week again. But everybody does a little bit differently. You know, I, I'm, I've talked to a bunch of guys and been involved in some bye weeks in the past and, you know, been very fortunate, like like you know, to spend some time with some NFL guys, and so I've talked to them a lot about how do you structure your bye week, and you know the recovery time on your bodies is huge, and uh, in the ability also to get a little bit of a head start uh, on next week's opponent. Well, that's the uh, third edition, I guess, of the Inside the Cardinal Playbook. I just want to say that uh, you know this is a process. This is going to be Division Two. We may Rick uh, talked about it during the course of the game for all the Cardinal fans. We need to work. Every play needs to be an improvement from the play before, not just a quarter or a half or that type of thing. The object is to get better on every play. And I thought, and I, we saw that this past week. So we have an off week coming up, and hopefully all of you will be ready to roll that following week. It will be also a home game, I believe, a 1 o'clock start. Yep, 1 o'clock start against Urbana University out of Ohio on Ohio, the 17th. Yep. Yep. So that will be a good one for us, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Hopefully this weather will stay like it is so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and, you know, you can find us on the William Jewell College Sports Network, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week uh, inside the Cardinal Playbook.